Welcome viewers. Our guest today is Alicia Henry, Assistant Editor of Alaska Heavy News. Thank you, Alicia, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So please tell us briefly, first of all, about the history of Alaska Highway News. The Alaska Highway News started in 1943 when Margaret Murray, or as she's more commonly called Ma Murray, uh, saw that the Alaska Highway was being built up here and decided she saw an opportunity to tell the stories of the people up here. And so she and her husband, George, came up, they came, they saw, they wrote. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, the rest is history. They, uh, it's been thriving ever since. It's all we're coming up on our 75th anniversary in a couple of years here. So it's been the paper record ever since. Very good. And what are your responsibilities as the assistant editor? Well, that's kind of changes from day to day. My main thing that I do is I cover the arts and culture of the community and the uh, basic other community stuff. Um, I also do page layout. So I have to put you know photos on the page and have the story flow around it and I have to do a lot of the uh, website. I, I actually maintain our website, and I uh, post to social media, so Facebook and Twitter, and just get the news out there to people. Thank you. The website helps us all. Oh, and wonderful. Excellent. And uh, what are the major strengths of Alaska Highway News? I think our major strength is how we focus on the community and focus on covering local stories, because that's the main purpose of a local community paper. You're not going to see little Timmy's, you know, on his hockey gear on the front page of the National Post or, you know, the Vancouver Sun or anything like that. You're going to see it on the cover of our paper or somewhere in our paper. So we're, we want to tell the stories of the people in the community. That's the, that's the most important part to us. Very good. And which news stories of the Peace Region have you enjoyed the most? I like telling stories about people and just individuals and the stuff that they do. I try to focus a lot on like if you are volunteers for an organization because they always have an interesting story about why they're doing what they do. Like there's always a background there, like there's a reason that they decide I'm going to help this organization or I'm going to help that organization. And it's always really interesting to hear those stories. And also any time that people are trying to get a word out about something because then that helps them and then it, it, if I'm helping them then I'm doing my job. It's really important I feel. I feel. Good. <laughs> and what's the scope of journalism in our peace region? We cover a wide variety of stuff. There's news, business, sports, arts and culture and community is the main things we kind of have in our paper. And it it seems we cover, we, there's, we have me who takes arts and culture, we have Byron Hackett who's on sports and he is mired in his sports world, he knows what's going on in all the, the, the sports activities in this town. Then we have Matt Prepros who is our kind of main news guy, he's at council, he's at school board, he's at all this different stuff in town. And then we have the, the fellows down, down south of the river. Uh, Johnny Wakefield and Mike Carter and Rob Brown who are they're separate from us they're, they're the Dawson Creek mayor but we still kind of work together when there's stuff that's relative to both areas because we want to make sure that we cover everything and that everyone can see what we ac is actually going on in the community. Good thank you and what's the philosophy of journalism in your opinion? I was once told that the journalism is meant to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. So we have to hold public figures to count. We have to hold them accountable for what they say and do. But we also have to help those who can't help necessarily help themselves or get, or get their voices heard. Because a lot of times there's always the, the pressing down, like, oh, you can't say anything because you this. Well, you come to us and we can probably help you say what you need to say or needs to be said. That's a great perspective. Thank you. <laughs> and when we talk about journalism, is 21st century the golden age of journalism in your opinion? I don't know that I'd call it a golden age. I think it's an interesting era for sure. Just because the, the amount of newsrooms and papers that have been closed in the last few years just due to the fact that they're, they're, they can't afford to keep printing the paper, that's, that's a huge blow to us and we all feel that. In, in, in the Peace region we had the closure of the Chetwin Echo and we had the closure of the Northeast News and that was, that was hard. I mean even though they're kind of competition, I guess, for lack of a better word, it's still, I mean, it hurt. We felt that. And it was a big blow to this area. So, but it's, it's, a, it's a different way of people are accessing their information in a much more different way. Like everyone has their, their smartphone with them. They can access our news websites or our Facebook or anything like that and get the local news anywhere they are. Like, you know, out at coffee, at home, at, at work, it doesn't matter. They can get it from just about anywhere, which is really neat. The only 
the only issue I think with that is that there's a lot of spread of misinformation because you'll find that something will be not sourced, not cited, and but it'll still it'll start spreading because it's a it's a clickbaity headline and people will just start sharing it and call it fact when it's actually it's it's not fact. And we really want people to get the actual real story. So it's it's we need to take the time to call the right people to talk to the, you know, the 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 voices that can actually speak to the issue. People aren't necessarily experts in their in the particular field of the the topic that's being spread around through social media. So we want to make sure that we talk to the right people who can speak to it, who have experience in that field. That way we can tell the full proper story. So proper citations, authentic, they're all important everywhere. They're very important. You want to have make sure that you have the right people commenting on certain topics. Because if you ask, you know, someone, you know, uh, a librarian about what this is going on in like you know, a trucking industry, they're probably not going to have the same, you know, things to say about as someone who actually works in that industry. So you want to make sure you actually talk to the right people to actually get the full story. Thank you. And please tell us about your award-winning column as I see it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That column was, uh, it's been around for about six years, I think now. Yeah. It's a time, time flies. It, you lose all track of time yeah. after a while. Um, it, uh, it started because they wanted me to start writing a column but I didn't really, I was kind of iffy about it because columns always seem to have a theme to them. It's like, oh, this is the political column. This is the food column. This is what, and I didn't want to be tied down to any one thing because like, I can't write about one topic every single week for how, who knows how long. So that's, so it's like, so can I write about anything I want? And it's like, well, yeah. And it's, you can just write about anything that comes to mind. So I'll just be telling you a story of as a, how I see it. And they're like, oh, that's the name of it, as I see it. So that's how it kind of came about, and from there it's kind of evolved. I, I write about, um, sometimes it's about my, my cats, sometimes it's about what's going on locally in the political scene, and a lot of times it's about um, different um, issues involving women's, women's issues, because I think that's very important and something that doesn't get touched on as much as it probably should be. Um, just raising awareness of different things that have happened, like for instance the, the Amanda Todd case where she was bullied to death, essentially, and same thing with uh, Retea Parsons out in Nova Scotia. That was a big thing that I felt needed to be addressed because we have so many, <laughs> the reaction that people have now to uh, someone being bullied or assaulted or something like that is not to help them or go out and, you know, um, like get help or, or tell the person stop it. They're, it's to whip out your phone and start filming it, which is a really backwards way of thinking in my opinion. So I, I feel that it's a good way to, the column is a good way to address these issues that are, that are, they affect nationally, they affect everyone across the country, but just getting people locally here aware of it, I think is kind of my main goal with the, with the column. Very good. And this is exactly how journalism makes a difference. Yes. Excellent. And uh, please comment on the famous quote of journalist Hemingway, <laughs> in order to write about life, you must first live it. Oh, Hemingway, <laughs> you old drunk. Um, <laughs> I think what, to take a more of probably, I guess, a literal translation of that, you basically have to write what you know. Because if you haven't experienced it, how can you truly write about what it's, what it's like to do something? Like, I probably couldn't write about skydiving because I've never done it. I couldn't tell you what it's like to be up in the plane or you know that feeling when you're falling, the, the, you know, 10,000 feet or however high it is. And, and like what, what you're experiencing like that, I can't tell you about that because I've never done it. I could probably write something kind of guess, but I might be missing it completely. Like, so ideally you, you, you should write what you know, that way you can actually write from your own experience and it's much easier and it's more authentic that way. Excellent. Please tell us any special story which really touched you. Well, I've covered a lot of events in this town for different things, different food drives, different vigils, different, just community events and I find that one of the ones that always really speaks to me is the Sisters in Spirit vigil that they have every year for missing and murdered indig indigenous women and I still remember back uh, it was a year, about a year and a half ago I think I got a call from someone from CBC Toronto they were looking for the the contact name of the contact number I guess of the one of the women who I interviewed in this story but it was one from about four four or five years ago and it, and I'm just like, well, okay, well, I'll go and I'll try and find it for you. But then I went back and I actually read the story. And I'm like, this was a pretty good story. Like, I'm, I'm impressed that she found it and that 
she, she wanted to actually, she read it and was actually that impressed by it that she wanted to reach out to the people who were in the story. So that was actually quite interesting. I also have um, one column in particular that I think is one that actually really reached out to most people. The one that I got the most uh, feedback for was the one that I wrote after um, Robin Williams' suicide because he suffered from severe depression and that is something that has plagued my life for a good number of years. And I basically came out saying that I am on medication for depression and anxiety. And if I went once that, and I was really nervous about putting that out there because there is a stigma surrounding mental illness. But once I put it out there, I got phone calls, I got emails, I got people coming up to me telling me, I take those too. I know what you're going through. I totally understand. Thank you for writing this. So that was really special to me that I was able to, that these people were able to relate to what I wrote and that I can relate to them too because now I know that it's not just me, it's a lot more people than that. So it's, it's nice to, to know that and to have people know that they're not alone. Absolutely, the, the awareness which you create so gradually, you know, all of us, we look into that, we try to improve, mm -hmm. and we wish all of us can do more as a community. Absolutely. We should all be there for each other because we are all in this together, especially now with the, the, the downturn and everything and the, the, the fact that there's so many people who have to use the food bank now because they're, they're still on unemployment and everything like that. Like, we have to work together because that's the only way we're going to get through this. Thank you. And finally, Alicia, what does freedom of expression mean to you? I think it's important that we are allowed to speak our mind. We live in a country where we have the right to free speech, but I think a lot of people don't seem to understand that all that freedom of expression protects you from is uh, being imprisoned for what you say. So just because you have an opinion doesn't necessarily mean that you should be expressing it in certain company, because you have people who say very negative, very racist, very homophobic, very not nice stuff. And they say, oh, I'm, it's my freedom of expression. It's like, well, yeah, but maybe you shouldn't be posting this on your social media account. It's, it's just, it's a matter of, you can say what you want, you can think what you want, and that's wonderful. And that's so it's wonderful if we live in this country. But maybe just think before you, you write or think before you say something is probably the best course of action I've learned over the years. Good, thank you. Thank you for coming to our program and we wish you all the best. Thank you for having me, it's been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah.